Before I drain the coolant, I'm checking the hoses to make sure they feel firm when I squeeze them and that there's no bulging around these hose clamps. And I'm removing the radiator cap to make sure air can get in when we drain the coolant. And I'm using a paint marker to mark these two heater hoses. More on that later. Now let's get down on the ground. Taking out these skid plate bolts. I'm just gonna be using a little 12 volt impact. So I wanna break them loose by hand before I spin them out. And I just don't like using big heavy tools above my head if I don't have to. Just a preference. These are 10 millimeter and then the big ones are 12. And it just comes swinging right down on you. This in the front is still hooked. You want to push it up and slide it to the driver's side. And that unhooks it. From here you have access to the radiator drain, which is right there. Right next to the oil filter, you've been changing the oil for the last 100,000 miles. All right, got me a bucket. Just put that right down there. I'm going to use these pliers here to just grab onto that petcock valve and twist it. Be careful, it's a... Uh, it's just plastic, so it's just easier to use this than to use my fingers. I'm just going to go until it starts flowing out the bottom. I'm just going to let it go for a while. If I pulled this all the way out, it would shoot out that way, and I don't want that. That didn't take too long. Let me go ahead and turn this off. I don't want it to spill on the driveway. We collected eh, about a gallon and a half, maybe. Let's scoop the bucket over here. We're gonna be on this side of the radiator. I wanna be as thorough as I can, and we're gonna drain that guy up there. I'll show you on top. Back up top now, we've got the overflow. It's right up here. It's still got some fluid in there, so we're gonna drain that out. Just gonna pull the hose. Well, let me get a tool. All right, these pliers are uh, a hose separator, a hose puller. I'm gonna try and get it just behind the hose here and give it a squeeze. There we go, just kind of popped it off. It was stuck on there a little bit, but now we got it. I'm gonna remove the hose from here. Let me show you. Okay, right down here, the hose is just routed through those little clips. We're gonna unroute that and we're gonna go all the way down to the bucket down there. All right, you should just see that bucket down at the bottom of your screen there. I'm going to try and aim this hose to the bucket, and it should go right in there without spilling a drop. Let's see what happens. It's hard to see down there, but that hose is just hitting the bucket. Anything that spills will be cleaned up in accordance with uh, EPA regulations. Yeah, I'm trying to get the cleanest job here. I want to empty as much of that old coolant as I can to get all new fresh fluid in there. The strange thing is this is a 100,000 mile coolant but only on your first 100,000 miles. After that Toyota says change it every 50,000. Okay we're back to these heater hoses that we painted earlier. The bucket is now moved down underneath here and I'm going to remove these clamps. Now I have hose clamp pliers. These are made by Bluepoint. Some people swear by them. A lot of viewers have left comments saying that I should be using these. I don't use them. I don't like using them. Uh, they just don't work well for me. I don't even keep them in my roll cart. They're over in the, uh, the bigger toolbox. That little lock right there is supposed to go inside the slot if you can get it. I don't seem to be able to. So I'm gonna call this one a fail for me. It's okay, I don't have a lot invested. Oopsie. If you just wanna hold the clamps up here on the hose, it's just fine. I'm sure that's gonna work without a problem here. Now we just gotta pull these hoses off. I think I saw it twist. Yeah, they're not even stuck. This one's a little stuck, let me grab. Yeah, I know. They're special pliers for grabbing heater hoses. But if you just give it a twist, like that, it just kind of breaks it free. 
and uh, it makes it easier to come off. Just let them drain into the bucket. So now inside the heater core in the under the dash, there's uh, there's going to be some coolant. So I'm going to use some air. I'm going to put air into this hose here. We'll see if we can get it out the other side. That was pretty awesome. We didn't even spill a single drop on the driveway. All of it's in the bucket. Trust me. I'll go ahead and blow a little bit of air in this other. Just to see if anything comes out of the first hose here. Probably nothing. All right, so we're clear as we're gonna be inside the heater core. Let's put the hoses back on and move on to the engine block. Okay, this is the critical step here. We wanna get these lines here lined up on the pipe where they were. And then the painted lines that I made right here on the hose, we need to line up the hose clamps exactly with those lines. And this is critical because we're reusing the hose I already inspected the hose, it's fine, it can be reused, but we want that clamp to be sitting exactly where it was. Let me clock that just a hair, it's just off a little bit. If you don't line it up and you have it anywhere but here, chances are very good that the hose will leak. See, I was trying to be like a mechanic hero and getting these clamps to lock open. Then I could be like, look at that. First try, skills like a boss. No, <laughs> not really. They're tough to do. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's move on to the engine block. We're gonna drain it. That's gonna be over here. We're gonna do the driver's side first. All right, let's focus in on there. Flashlight is pointing at it. Let's see if we can focus. See that right there? On the engine block, that's one of the drains. This is the driver's side. I'm on the other side near the front uh, bumper. Let's see if I can crack this loose. And yes, I scooped the bucket. Well, that took a lot longer than I thought. It took about 10 minutes to get this drain, but it's, uh, it's done now. So I can just give it a little tighten up here. All right. You don't really have to kill it. Looks like this little clip has had it. I actually didn't have to pull it out. It was already hanging out. So let me go ahead and replace this thing. All right, it seems to fit in there pretty good. I'll snap it locked. Oh yeah, that's in there. It's not gonna go anywhere. Let me show you that This kit. is something like a thousand piece kit or something like that. It's got all sorts of sizes and you're gonna break these clips. So in case you need it, you got it. I'll leave a link down below so you can check them out for yourself. Right, coming around the passenger side, this is the sunny side of the truck here. So I don't need a flashlight, but this little guy didn't come off by itself, but I'm gonna bring it out. Now this is gonna get thrown away. That other clip costs next to nothing, maybe a penny or two. So I'm just gonna throw this right in the trash or on the ground and we'll replace it. First, let's get this thing drained. Same procedure, I'm not gonna bore you with it. Okay, we've got the bucket, it's full, about half full. So we've got about two, two and a half gallons out of there. A lot came out of the engine block, but most of it came out of the left side because we did that first. Okay, and we've got everything buttoned up up here, but I did make a little bit of a mess on the engine. Uh, let's get that cleaned off so that we don't have any coolant contaminating the belt or anything like that. So just don't want any squeaks. All right, got a clean bucket now because this is the fun part. We get to use the coolant filler. Now this just kinda goes in there with friction and we're gonna create a vacuum inside the system. I'm gonna add about two and a half gallons, three gallons to our bucket. Yeah, it's a bit over what we had, so we'll probably have some left. It's all right, we'll pour it back in the jug if we have to. I just like pulling it from one container instead of switching over. This particular refiller, it's made by Mighty Vac. Uh, there's plenty of them out there, but I'll link this one so you can see it on Amazon if you want to get one. A 
let it sit for about 10 minutes or so and it's still got about 20 inches of vacuum on the gauge so we're pretty good i'm going to fill the tube with coolant and then i'm going to bleed out uh, some of the air that i sucked in from the tube just to get 100 percent sure that i've got no air in the system hold on about the best i can do now whatever it is you're doing to keep the air uh, out of your cooling system, it's super important. So use one of those spill-free funnels and let the car run or whatever your method is. You gotta do something. Any air bubbles inside of here could cause either an overheat in your engine or your heater to not work because there's air in there. Remember, we drained everything uh, out of this system, so we gotta pull all that air out. But we're ready to go, let me hit the switch. drawn gauge is at zero and we filled right about to the top there so I'm going to turn this off so I don't spill anything and then I can get it down in here in the overflow because we're going to have to fill that up also all right so the tool is empty the truck is full I'm going to top it off just a little bit uh, from here then we'll start it and see what it look like. All right, now that we're about to wrap it up, I'm gonna start the engine here. Oh, we got a show over there. All that water that was on the fan, it just blew everywhere and kind of <laughs> kind of startled me a little bit, but that's all it was, it was just the fan drying off. So now we're gonna let the engine uh, warm up. It's going to cycle all of that coolant through the thermostat when the thermostat opens. And there goes that belt. The belt's uh, squeaking because it's wet right now, but it's also time to change it. 100,000 miles, time for the belt and tensioner. That's next. Okay, we've got coolant temp at 86 degrees Celsius right now. That's what it's reading on the scanner. So I'm gonna take my thermostat and change that to Celsius. It's 31 outside. Let's go ahead and look at the vent temperature. All right, here we go. We're gonna just stick it in the vent. All right, bar. Let's let that kind of hang out there. I'll turn on the heater. And we can watch our vent temperature come up. Just gonna give it a little bit of shoe. Raise that engine speed up, see if we can get that coolant temperature to come up a bit. And oh man, it's getting hot in here. It's kind of where it's leveled out, about 70 degrees or so. Uh, that's that's plenty to melt <laughs> all sorts of ice. I'm, I'm sweating, I gotta turn this thing off. Coolant level is stabilized now. It's looking pretty good. I had to hold it at about 3000 RPM for almost five minutes to get that heater core to burp out. Now finally we've got heat inside uh, coming out of the dash, so we're good to go. I'm going to put the truck back on the ground and drive it into the garage to do the rest of the services uh, for the 100,000 miles. I'm going to put all of those repairs into the same playlist as everything else on the Tundra. There's a lot of videos in there. You can catch up on those by clicking that, and I'll see you there.